Hi, everybody. This is Ken Corbin again with the Manufactured Home Show. This is the program where you're going to hear and meet the absolute best of the best from manufacturers, suppliers, lenders, retailers, community owners, and more. And of course, if you have any questions, suggestions for future guests, and so forth, simply drop me an email at ken at callkencorbin.com. And as always, all of these programs will be available for you to view on learnmh.com, on my business Facebook page, which is uh, Ken Corbin Speaker. You'll also see them on the upcoming YouTube channel called The Manufactured Home Show. And of course, uh, on my website, callkencorbin.com, and you'll simply click on the little button that says The Manufactured Home Show. Uh, with that, I have a very special guest today, someone that I've worked with for, uh, I'm going to say, a decade or more, and it's Ryan Scher, who's a resourceful web professional with over 18 years of experience managing, coaching, consulting, and developing from small startups to multi-million dollar companies across diverse industries. Of course, this includes the manufactured housing industry as well. He's worked with creative teams, multimedia divisions, corporate communications departments, and business owners in planning and implementing online hosting environments that effectively serve the customer's needs. Ryan's developed online web presence for hundreds of diverse companies, including my own company website. And in addition to being a co-host with me on the audiobook Social Media Magic, Ryan's an expert in managing and enhancing the delivery of new capabilities to various web applications throughout the entire technology industry. And with that wonderful introduction, here is my dear friend, Ryan Sherry. It is so good to see you, Ryan. We haven't seen you in a while. Ken, good to be here. Appreciate it. Real, real pleasure. Uh, we'll get right into it. So let's say that I'm a, I'm a new business or a startup and... and, and and I want to get into marketing, where the heck do I start? Well, I think the most important thing, Ken, is, is to be realistic when you're just getting into it. If you're, if you're new at it, you want to be realistic and, and you want to set a goal. A lot of people tend to kind of dip their toe into the marketing and they waste a lot of money doing that. If you don't have a real clear idea as to what your goal, your end goal is, you're better off to start in the planning stage. And I think that's probably the best place they can start. If if you're not focused and you don't have a goal, then it's kind of just a wish. You just go throwing money out there and you waste a lot of money that way. So I would say you would, you would start off with that. So, but, but it goes back to money. And, and so mm -hmm. I'm a new business or I'm a business that's been around a long time or been around a while. And I've got to set some type of a budget. Um, how much money should I start with and how do I allocate it? Well, there's, there's a couple things that drive a project. So you've got, and it's pretty standard across all industries as well as with marketing. You've got quality, you know, and you've got your uh, time frame or money or resources. And then you've got like timing itself. It's like if, if you were the, the Olympics, it's, it's going to be time that's going to be driving that project. You have to have it done by X date to have it launched to be able to do your marketing and, and launch your marketing campaign for your website or your social media or whatever it is you're using to drive the traffic. So that's going to be the driving factor. If you know, you're a new company and you say, look, I have $30,000 to spend. That's all I've got. Then money and resources are going to be what is going to be driving the project. So being realistic at the beginning and setting a budget, like for instance, and I'm just kind of ballparking numbers out there. Let's say you say, okay, I've got, I've got $10,000 to build my website, well, you better have twenty thousand dollars to back that up to your marketing, because you can build the Walt Disney website, but if nobody knows about it, it, it doesn't really do anything for you. You know, that's that's a great point. Where a lot of people don't realize, you know, there's a lot more than just the website. And like you mentioned, you could have a Walt Disney website or an Amazon website, right, you know, or a Google website. But if nobody knows it's there, it, it doesn't do you a darn bit of good. But from, from a, a website design and, and from a designer like yourself, is there any special tips, we might even call them tricks, that someone 
should consider when they're designing their site or, or working with someone like you to say, this is what I want to do that's going to really grasp and take hold? Well, I mean, if you're, if you're a creative type or you have somebody inside your company that's a creative type, you could, you could try going the DIY route. But I think most of the time you find that you wind up spending more money in the long run and you wind up wasting a lot of your time. You're better off to do what you do best in your business. So it's running your business. Um, it doesn't mean that you're just going to hand it to somebody and say, take it over and run with this. You, you're obviously part of the project and you need to work through it. But having a firm or somebody that can sit down and identify your goals and your needs and walk you through it step by step from the planning to the execution to finish up and follow up, that's going to be the easier way to go. I mean, comment on the blog. There's tons of tips and tricks of, of ways to do things. Goes talks about buying domains or the hosting or how to choose your hosting service or uh, just overall logo designs, things like that. There's a lot of different articles about that. And if you've got the time, you know, if you've got plenty of time and no money, that's that's the way you could go. If you're a busy, you know, business owner, probably better off just grab a firm that fits you because not every company fits together well. So you, you want to you shop around and talk to some people and, and see if you're a good fit. Well, you know, one of the things talking about the site that I've noticed, even with my own site, and again, you've, you've done my site, we did it a number of years ago, mm -hmm. but we've continued to update. We just didn't do the site and let it sit and become stagnant. Right. Uh, how important is doing it, doing updates and how often should you do one? You should be doing as, as easy and as much as possible. So if you're using like you, for instance, you're using WordPress as a development platform for your website, which makes it easy for you to log in and make some updates and the updates you don't feel comfortable doing, then you come back to somebody like me and you say, Hey, I need these things done. And then we go and do those for you. Um, you really should have an update at the bare minimum once every two weeks, if not every week, um, you start setting Google like Pavlov's dog. So if you, if you put out a blog post Tuesday at, you know, two o'clock, and you always do that, then that bot will be sitting there waiting for that new content. And it's gonna index it, it's gonna put it into the search engines and that's gonna you know, allow you to draw more traffic to your website and get your message out more. Well, it's like we were just talking during the introduction of this program. One of the things that we'll be doing on my website, you know, the callkencorbin.com, is you're adding the new button up here that all mm -hmm. of these programs will easily be accessed Right. But at the same time, a lot of people talk about blogs. That's a, that's a hot term. And it's been around for a long time. You know, talk to us. What is a blog? How does it work? Is it effective? Is, is it a waste of time? You know, talk, talk to me about blogs. Blog got a bad rap early on because it was, you know, you've got the mommy blog or, or things like that. And people think when they're in business, that that's not an effective way to um, get your message out, but it's an extremely effective way to get your message out because what you're doing is you're providing free content on the web, which Google loves that Google loves Google and they love anything that's free that they can, you know, give to their, their people. So that blog is something that is constantly being indexed into the, the search uh, results page for Google. So the more that you're, you're creating and the more that you're giving out there, and free content, not a sales pitchy type thing. Um, number one, it helps set you as an expert in your industry. People can see that you actually know you you know what it is you're talking about. Um, it makes you more approachable. They feel like, okay, I kind of know him because you've read a lot of their articles. So it's very helpful with business. And the other thing is now that the new kind of thing is the vlog, which is just a video version of the blog. So instead of writing articles, you're just getting on here and you're speaking and you're saying, Hey, here's what to do in this you know, situation and maybe even giving examples. So, I mean, blogs are very important. Vlogs are the, the new trending thing, especially when you've got TikTok and all the, the other social media marketing out there that you're able to, to do the videos and, and it, it, it allows people, it allows a small business to actually compete with some of the bigger stores because you're able to tell your unique story. You're able to tell them what you're about and they get to know you as a, as a person um, and see what kind of values you have in your business. So very important. Well, in, in, in the manufactured housing industry, as you obviously well know, know well, there's many, many small mom and pop operations and, mm -hmm. and 
they want to get their name out. Sure. So from a marketing perspective on the back end, because we've already talked a little bit about the website, but you also stress the importance of, hey, you've got to market it so people even know that it's there. Right. Do you have any suggestions for people to help drive business to their website from a marketing end? Well, it's just like in the olden days, you know, when, when guys went out and rented in the mall because that's where the foot traffic was. Right. And it's basically the same thing on online because you want to be where the foot traffic is. So you're going to be in those social mediums like Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, you know, all the different ones that are out there. And if you're on those mediums and you're delivering good content, YouTube as well, you're, you're delivering good content, people tend to flock towards what you're doing. So if they're following you on Twitter, then, you know, you may say on Twitter, Hey, follow me on Facebook. So then they go to your Facebook. So you're intermingling all these, you've got a little network of all these people and they start following all the different ones. As you start to build a bigger audience, then they start to realize that like, Oh, well, you know, when I need this, I'm definitely going to go to Ken Corbin because he knows what's going on in the industry. He's doing this, he's doing that. So I think it's important to look at it more as where you're going to go where the foot traffic is. And there's not a lot of cost involved in those. And if, if you can set up your own Facebook page and make it look nice, you know, then there's no cost involved in that. Same thing with Twitter and YouTube and all those things. There's a high learning curve when it comes to technology, especially if you're a business owner and you like to say you manufacturing housing. You're like, man, I hate that computer. I like talking to people. I like going out and shaking their hand and showing them stuff and telling them like, hey, you know, this is how we take care of things. So it might not be your bag of tricks. You might be like, I'd rather just stay away from that. And that's what firms like. That's why firms like mine exist. So you can come and say, hey, look, here's, here's what I want to do. And we identify your needs and we say, okay, look, we could do this, 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 and this. And this is how we're going to get you out there. And brand awareness is one of the things that we do for, for you know, not only home builder, uh, home builders, but all kinds of different industries and show them like, look, people have to know you're out there. Number one, I mean, your, your branding, when it comes to your logo, your branding, when it comes to your uh, blog, your blog, your website, your Facebook page, it all needs to match. It all needs to be spoken. One voice. You need to be able to make sure that everything in there paginates throughout. So they're not like, wait a minute, this is kind of in this voice and this is kind of in that voice. So, you know, who am I really talking to here? So what you're saying is, let me make sure I understand. It should have a very similar look across all the platforms. Am I correct? You want that branding to, to be something that they remember. Nike did a great job way back in the day when they did that swoosh. You know, and that was back in the, I don't know, late sixties when they started all that. Um, but you look at it now, you'll see just a swoosh. It doesn't have to say Nike. You know who it is. Same thing with the Amazon Smile. Exactly. exactly. You know it's theirs. Well, okay. Let me ask one final question. And, and I really appreciate it. This is so resourceful and helpful for, for our listeners and for our viewers. If there's one thing that I could start with today to help market my business, what would you recommend that item be? Care. I mean, honestly, the, the biggest thing today, if you care about your customers, if, if you do that and you, you're willing to help them, even if it's not benefiting you, if they need some resource that you happen to know, because we all network together and we know one another. And, and when you know somebody and you say, hey, you know, I've got this guy, I'll have him give you a call. That's really what's important in business today that I think that we've lost is caring for your customers and really trying to deliver the best solution that you can, even if it doesn't benefit you. So, I mean, that to me, that's how you keep long-term customers. I've had customers in the tech industry, usually two years is about the most you catch. I've got customers I've had for 10 years because I take care of them. And if you're taking care of them, they're going to take care of you and they're going to tell their friends that, you know, you're a great guy, you take care of them. Word of mouth is by far the best form of marketing because you can trust the person you're talking to. You ask their advice, hey, who did your website? Oh, so-and-so did. You know, and he's great. He did this and he did that. And that's really the best thing you can do right now is just genuinely care. The rest of it will all fall in line. You know, if, if you're having, if you've got questions, you know, hit me up, hit Ken up, you know, get somebody that, that's a professional in your, you know, genre that you want to talk to. And it doesn't mean you're hiring them. You may not, you may not want to hire them. You may not, you may not like me, you know, you'd be like, 
maybe you don't like fat guys. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I must admit you talked about 10 years and, and this year is, uh, I, in fact, I beg your pardon. Last year I received, I will call it my 10 year pen working with Ryan share and Kendra creative. And, yeah. and I can tell you it's, it's been a wonderful ride. You're always available. You've, you've been just a, a, an incredible marketing resource for my business. And, and I cannot thank you enough that I could pick up the phone and, and call Ryan. Speaking of such, how can people, if they want more information on you and Kendra Creative, how can they reach out to you? Um, they can hit me up on email, Ryan at Kendra Creative, without the E, because we couldn't afford a vowel. Um, or Fat Man and Speedos, eating Doritos.com. Fat Man in Speedos, eating Doritos.com. Yes, yes. That or KendraCreative.com. Yeah. Now, the way. Kendrick is spelled how? K E N D R I C K C R E A T I V.com. Gotcha. Ryan, this has been absolutely, again, a joy. It's, it's always a pleasure talking to you and seeing you. And I, I want to thank you for spending the time with us today. I'm sure a lot of people will have questions and comments. They can write to me, and I can also put them direct contact with you. Or write me at Kenneth Call Ken Corbin, and I'll be happy to forward your, your comments, questions on to Ryan. And folks, thank you so much. It's been, it's been a wonderful show. And Ryan, we hope to have you come back again soon. Definitely. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody.